All right, folks, welcome back to Karak Avalon's Gaming. We're back in Valheim, and today I have a different type of video for you. I have a build video. Um, this channel is not known for its Valheim builds. I do most of my Valheim content on finding unique seeds with maypoles. Um, I wanted to do a build video because there is a specific build that I use in almost all of my playthroughs that I think is 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 a pretty good starter build. It can serve you all the way till the end of the game if you so desire. Um, it can fit just about everything that you need. Um, it's pretty compact and it's nice. One of the other things that I wanted to do is is a lot of the build videos that I see out there are very very creative very talented they're also very fast and they also don't explain each specific step along the way oftentimes you see these videos you see these incredible builds and you're like wow that's fantastic how can i do that you actually have to watch stop try to recreate a piece watch a little bit more um not everybody that plays valheim has that artist mentality where they can just look at a at, a, at an area and say okay I'm going to create this beautiful thing. Um, many of us have analytical minds and just don't have the ability to um, be creative. So what I want to do with this video is is take some time. It'll be a longer video, but show you step by step how I'm actually doing this build. Um, so before we get going, let me say thank you. Thank you for taking your time to watch my content. I really appreciate it. Please smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share the video. All that stuff really helps the channel out, and it keeps me motivated as a creator. I really, really appreciate it. So to get going, we've already found the location that we're going to build on. Now, you can build this really anywhere. Um, I would recommend, though, that you find what I call one of these five stone lots, for lack of a better term. <laughs> Why? Because these stones can't be damaged. Meaning you can have a troll attack and they hit the stone and it's not going to break the stone. These are placed all over the map um, in Valheim at random. I'm not sure why, what they represent. Um, you know, why you would want to do that. Why they're here, I should say, but they're here. Now, the nice part about them is, is that in between these stones you can build walls you can build stone you can build wood whatever you want and it provides a decent defensive structure particularly early in the game and it'll serve you well all the way until you get to about the mountain biomes when you start getting attacked from the air that's when this um particular um strategy has a little bit of a weakness but you can build up onto these and build a rampart all around them which i've done before as well and that rampart serves as your um, archer towers where you can hit those drakes coming in. So th that's why I recommend here. Now, the other thing is, is you have to be wary about how close you are to water. The closer you are to water, the chance that you have that water will spill into your location. Now, often when there's a storm, the water will rise, the waves will come crashing in, and you'll get water into your camp and it'll put out your fire. It does recede very quickly, um, so I don't think it's a huge problem, but it becomes a problem if you choose to dig down, and this particular structure does have a basement, okay? And yes, we are going to build through the night here, <laughs> so I am not going to speed this video up, though. What I am going to do is show you step by step how I built this. This could be a very long video. Um, I understand it's not for everybody, but like I said in the intro, I wanted to do a build creation video where the viewers get a chance to see how long it actually takes to build it, how each piece is set up, etc. Now let's go talk to Hugin real quickly. Okay. Oh, get the hammer. Be wary of weather. Yep, we are in um, God mode here, so, you know, I'm going to try to make this um, as seamless as possible. So what you want to do is, and I apologize for the darkness, you want to get 
a wood beam to meters. Okay, this is a regular wood beam, and you want to play. You want to figure out where you want your front door. I want it between these two pieces of wood, because I think what will happen is is we'll build a. For this build later on, I may build a porch that goes out to the water. So I want to build right about here. Okay. Now you may not be able to see that because of the darkness, but once it turns to day, I will show it to you again. So you've got your first piece down, and what you want to do is just click the mouse once, your wheel once, and then again. Every every board, line it up, and click it once, and go all the way around. Now, when you're doing this, you can measure out wherever you want in the circle. Right. Oh, uh, see, we missed one. So you can measure out wherever you want in the circle, right? Um, if you want it to be exactly symmetrical to the five stones, that's fine. Um, if your particular five stone structure is near the water and you want it to be right on the water, that's cool. If you're not building this in a five stone structure and you just want to build it somewhere else, that's fine as well. Um, so what we have here is, again, just a circle. Okay, and you put down your, your front piece is the main piece, and then it's a, a, a just a mouse wheel click once, and then an, another two meter board all the way around. Okay, now this is the base structure. This particular structure has a basement. So what we want to do now is we want to take two meter log poles and put them in each snap point of our base just all the way around no need to click here just follow along all the way um, and why we're using core wood is is it provides better structure it provides stronger structure and it's gonna you know it I think aesthetically it looks a little bit better when this is done maybe you'll agree so now we want to take two meter log two meter log and put it across each one now this one is going to be a click and you just want to line it up right so put it in just click it back and back and go all the way around okay now this is going to be the base for your cellar now why are we doing this because when we have improvements to our crafting areas okay we're going to put them in the basement and this is how we're going to make this a very efficient base so you can see here you're in this circle right so you've done your core wood base up here okay and you're like all right well Karak, how do i get out of it you can't really jump out of it you can do this in god mode if you don't do it in god mode you can put a ladder up and you should be fine so what we want to do next is is take the wood wall and put those wood walls right into these slots okay and you'll you'll see you line it up by moving the mouse now you can have it facing any way that you want um, I like to have the smooth side on the outside all right so we're just gonna go all the way around and do that and a good way to eye it up is, is to make sure that the lines for each wall match with the one next to it and after a while, you'll get to see it's just a one-click turn. So you match the one-click turn that you have on your two-meter base. Oh, that one didn't match. <laughs> All right. And there we go. All right, so what we want to do here is let's do a quick inspection. This is how it looks from the outside. Okay, remember this is this is going to be your cellar. Okay, so what you want to do is remember where your wall, is, your door is. Okay, and we're going to put that on now. Now you can put whatever type of door you want, but you would normal. I normally put the wood gate. Okay, um, the dark wood gate is a, is a two piece. I don't have. I don't build mine for that. But what you want to do here is, once you have the door established, you can start to put your flooring in. Now, you can put another door on this side as well. But normally, what I would recommend is you put it opposite of 
your initial front door. Okay, so we can do that now just for um, purposes of the video. I don't normally put two doors in, I just run around, but everybody is, you know, to each their own. So now you want to get the wood 2x2 two two flooring, and again, what you want to do is um, match it up to your front door. Okay, one, two, come to the other side, one, two, okay, to the side, one, two, see how they're just touching a little bit right there, and then one, two, so what you have here is, is you have two boards from your front door, two boards from your back, and then two from each side. You can put doors there too if you want. You can have four doors um, if, if you so choose. Um, all right, so that's the, ba the start of our flooring for this particular location. Now, what we want to do here is, is we want to come down a little bit. We now want to put floorboards. Where am I? There it is. It's already highlighted. Come on. <laughs> right here. And right next to each each other. So one. Should be able to get four in. Two. Three. Four. Now, what you want to do is come to the to the edge. Line up your edge of your floor to the edge of your core wood poles. Okay? Just again, you just spin the wheel until you're matched up here. And they should click right in and fill in the gap of your floor. And this does go a little bit quicker when you have daylight. Alright, I'm making sure that I'm matched up here. So. Once day breaks, we will hopefully pick up the pace. Now, that is your floor base. So this is the this is going to be your floor for this build. Now, here is where you have to get a little creative. Not not too creative. So what we're going to do is going to put an edge around this square in the middle. Okay, and we're going to use our hoe to ri raise the middle up just a little bit. One, two. Okay, and we're going to put a fire down. Okay, this is going to be our main fire pit. Okay, so, and you want to make sh eyeball it, make sure that's in the center. Because what's going to happen is, is underneath here is still our cellar, okay? We're going to remove one of these boards in the, it, as the build progresses. And we're going to need to get access to the cellar somehow. Now, um, the fire, however, does, it, there's a little mound of dirt that's risen up down there, which is going to be the, um, it's just going to be, you can whittle that down and you can, um, be creative. If you want, you can probably go into the cellar and start to um, hoe around it to make it um, even less of an impact. But for right now, that's all we need. So we're going to come over here and we're going to go back to our building and we're going to go to four meter log poles. I'm going to put one of those on each one of the two meter coral wood log poles. Okay, and you can see our we're starting to take shape here. This yurt is looking better and better. Okay, so all the way around. And then again, we're going to do the same thing that we did on the bottom. We're going to take our log beam, a two meter log beams and fill in up top as well. And this, again, you can see I'm not the greatest builder. It takes me a little bit of time, but I know there's other people out there that are not um, as proficient builders. They don't specialize in it. 
Okay, but you want to go all the way around with these log beams. It's core wood. So that's done. So now we need to start on our roof. Now, what we want to use is we want to use the thatch 45 degree roof. Okay. Um, you can use any 45 degree roof. I personally like the aesthetic of the shingle roof that came with hearth and home. And that's what I'm going to use for this build. But if you're not using sheet mode or god mode, um, this won't be available to you for quite some time. So you're definitely going to end up using the thatch roof excuse me, but use the 45 degree roofing, okay? And you'll see that this will slot in right on top of each each one of these core wood pieces that we put in. It's just one click, one click, one click, and all the way around. Okay, there we go. So that's the start of the roof. Now, we want to line up again with our door. And we want to come and get 26 degree shingle roof. And again, if you're not using cheat mode or if you um, are just starting out, you can use the thatch roof. Okay, same, but you want to use the 26 inch, 26 degree, I'm sorry. Okay, line it up with your door. Come over to your other door, your uh, opposite of your opening, and then again, over here, make sure that those corners touch. Basically what we did with the flooring, okay? So now you've got those pieces. Now this is a little part, this part is a little tricky. Okay, so what you do is you come and line up your piece exactly the way it was before. Just a click, drop it in, okay? Line it up, just a click, drop it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can clean it up later if you don't like how it looks, okay? Get it so it covers up as much of the roof as you can. Um, again, you, you're probably going to have a couple of pieces that look a little out of place. That's all right. Um, just get it built. And we can always do cleanup and restoration work later. There we go. So, see here, it's not a perfect opening. <laughs> you know, I've got this one little gap here. But overall, that's um, it. So right now, you've got a structure, okay? And it looks pretty good. Um, that at its core is the yurt build. Now, you could do another you could do another story if you wanted, meaning you could put stairs up here to um to this po to these poles, put some flooring, do another uh uh core wood poles up and build a, another area if you want another floor if you wanted. So you can make this up to three floors. At that point you're gonna run into some uh, structural integrity issues with your with your roofing. But right now we have a cellar, we've got our main floor and we've got a decent roof. Now let's start to put in some walls. So walling is going to be very simple. We're gonna get our wall and again I like to have the smooth area out. You do whatever you want to do and we're gonna put two of these. Up, all the way around, okay? Wanna make sure that that's up, right, right there. 
Okay, and once you get the first one in, it's easier to line up the next ones. Should be easier, but apparently it isn't for me. <laughs> All right. There we go. Just put it in the slotting and click once over on your mouse wheel. It should, should be fairly straightforward. That's why. And all the way around. And before you know it, you're going to have an enclosed structure. A place for your worldly goods. Okay, a couple more. Alright, so now we've got these two openings at the doors. You can do that for ventil. You can leave those for ventilation. I personally don't. Um, you put in two half walls there. This is up to you. Okay, so now you have a fully enclosed yurt. Okay, but we still have an issue of the fire pit and how do we protect it from rain. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to come over here again to your fire pit and come to one side. You can put it on any either side of the four that you want. And you want to get the 45, the 26 degree roofing. Now, we're using the shingle roofing here for our purposes. You can use thatch if you don't have this unlocked. You want to come right to that core wood and just click it there. And then another one attached to that. Then you want to come to the shingle roof ridge, 26 degrees. Click that in. Then come down the other side with your roof with your um, 26 degree roofing, and sometimes that happens, that's okay. Attach it here first, then it should click right into these two, and boom. Now, it's gonna look orange and red. You're not gonna have problems here, okay? That's not gonna fall in on you. If you're attacked, it may, but it's not. But what it is going to do is it's going to shield this fire from the rain, okay? The rain is going to come in on the hole. Let's go outside and take a look at that. Okay. It's going to come in down here, but as you can see, you're pretty much shielded. Okay. There's no rain is going to get in there, so your fire is not going to go out. It's going to vent through. That's the only vent that you have, unless your door is open. Um, and you have some holes in your roof, which, you know, I've, I think I've got one little spot here. Um, now, again your roofing you can come back and revisit this to clean it up if you want but the concept that I showed you is still the same okay so now we've got the core of our yurt how do we make this stronger what do we do this is where actually you want to put in some defense so what you want to do is you want to come here to this stake wall now, the stake wall in and of itself is pretty good defense for early game, but when you combine it with the other wall structures, it's actually almost as strong as stone. It's really, really strong. Um, if you get attacked or invaded by um, high-level mobs, you're going to have trouble regardless of what you build unless you're building all stone structure. Hopefully, by the time you get to that point, however, you're already at a point with your um, your character where you're able to defend. Um, you've got some weapons, you've got a couple, you know, you maybe you have that um, that archer's uh, perches up here, I don't know, but this is going to serve you well enough. You'll be able to get minimally through the swamp biome attacks with this structure. Um, you should be able to get all the way to the end game. There, I, I remember when I had um, this, when I got to th my initial um, planes, which I'm still stuck at, planes, by the way, um, I did have quite a bit of damage done during an invasion, but I was able to rebuild it fairly quickly. Anyways, that narrative aside, what you want to do is you want to take this stake wall and just put it right in. You see, it'll, it'll fit right in, and very similar to the way that we place the other pieces. Just one click of the mouse, make sure it matches up. all the way around. 
Now it's important to do this before you start placing your structures inside the yurt because as you'll see in a minute we're going to also do it for the next level. Now you want to skip the door. Okay, the door area you cannot put this in because otherwise you will not be able to get in and out of your building. That's why I don't recommend you do more than two more than two doors. I only use one so I can have this defensive structure all the way around. But you do you. So um, I did do that. I did put it here just so you could see. Um, but I don't recommend that you do it in front of your doors. Um, I don't recommend that you have a second door. So, anyways, we also need to build some steps, right? Because we need to get in and out of this. So let's do that real quickly. I mean, just build as many as you need here to, to, to run in and out of your particular um, yurt. Okay, so there you go. You see the stake walls are coming up. Okay, so we know that our cellar is protected. So now what we want to do is take the stake wall, put it on the inside. Okay, now this may not be aesthetically pleasing, um, but the defensive value of this is really, really remarkable. Again, you've got two layers of wood wall here. It, it's, it's actually very, very strong. There's a couple of videos online that you can take a look at that show you the different ways to, um, the different walls and how, how good they are defensively, etc. Um, obviously this isn't as good as a moat around your property, but it, it, it really is a defensive, a decent defensive structure. And then you can see aesthetically, it doesn't look too horrible. It actually fits fairly well. Um, if you've got mods on your particular game, I play with a couple of mods. One of them allows you to put like Ivy or something on there if you want to cover that up. But I don't think it looks horrible on its own, okay? And I think this is fairly good in terms of defense. I don't think anyone's just going to be able to come in here. You're certainly going to be able to get through the, all the way to the swamp. Um, and you're going to be able to defend against the motor attacks and the Drakelings if you've got decent archer tower somewhere around here. Um, or you can pull them away from this. They will damage it from the air, particularly your roof. Um, but again... It, this is about the best defensive structure I think you can get early game. So one of the other reasons we picked the five stone location is, is we can put these walls up here too. I'm just going to do one side, as you see. Okay, so there you go. You've got a nice wall all here. You can do this all the way around. To the, between these stones, these stones, these stones over here. Maybe leave your front door open as access to the water. Maybe you can put a couple of pieces here and then a door. Um, you can also put stone wall here if you want as well. That'll fit in. And you notice the game does allow you to actually put these really fairly deep into the stones that are already there. So you can, you know, pretty much mix and match. Here and then, you know, obviously with stone, yeah, we've got some other pieces we can use to fill in gaps, etc. But at any rate, I just wanted to show you this is one of this is the reason why I picked this five stone location because you can put up walls pretty quickly, wood or stone. And again, with these wood walls, you can also put with these um, stake walls, you can put the wood wall right in here. Got to get it to line up. <laughs> and it, again, will increase the defensive structure of that of the stake wall, and it'll meet and match aesthetically here what you have. You can also, if you want, will it click in? No, it doesn't click in. It used to. Um, you could click in um, or wood in there or something else to make that even stronger. So that is the 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 basic of this particular um, yurt and why I think it's a decent defensive structure. Now, in terms of actually living in the yurt, what does that look like? Well, first of all, one of the things that you would do that I would recommend is, is you get these, these, these boards, just build 
shell vein. Okay, so pick one side of your yurt that you want to have your shelf, your shelving and your crafting. Okay, so we're going to make it this side. Okay, we're not going to go all the way around here. And over here, we're going to have our bedding. So, yes, you can fit just about everything you need in here. Um, put a king size bed, the dragon bed, and put. Um, you know, we can get the little the little stool bonus, which is table. You're going to get. We're going to have a throne. We can have that right here if we want. Put the stool. This gives us our table. Am I in the wrong place? I'm just not seeing it. Never find the little stool. Five minutes later. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, you put that right here. That counts as a table. Okay, I like to put a little guy up there. Okay, you can put a banner anywhere that you want. Up here, I like to put it right there. Okay, so you've got Comfort 9 already. Be able to throw your rugs down anywhere that you want here. Put a Lox rug there. Over here. Here, right there. There are all your rugs. You can put a hanging brazier somewhere. You can hang it right from here if you want. And it fell right down. <laughs> That's not good. Um, maybe you can put it there. How's that? Or you can put one on the other end. So there's your hanging brazier. Um, what else do we need for our comfort bonus? You can build a maypole. I would build it outside. You can put a Christmas tree in here if you want. That's not available yet. Maypoles are no, no longer buildable unless you're in cheat mode. Um, scones you can put anywhere that you want, etc. So you get the gist of it. The inside is one side of the fire pit is for your um, comfort. The other side is for crafting. Now, I'm going to put... Our workbench here. You see, that's great. Let's talk to Hugin. You say, okay, great, you got a workbench. You can also put where is it? Our forge here. Let's see, the stone cutter we don't really need. That's usually outside. But what about all these improvements, right? Now, on the outside, I'm going to recommend... Well, you can put the fermenter. I like to put that right by the door. The spinning wheel is usually for the planes. You don't need that here. The windmill is for the planes. The chocolate kiln is outside. The blast furnace, that... That is going to be something that you're going to have outside. So is it the smelter. Okay, but there's a lot of improvements here, right? Now, the artisan's table, you do have some room here. You could probably wedge it in in between here if you move things. You know, you got to move things around a little bit. So you've got a little room between the fermenter and the work table. And there's also a little room over here on the other side of your forge. You've got... So you could you could get an artisan table in there as well, um, but the rest of these items, you know, the stone oven, you're going to have to put outside. The pots and pans, you can put that in here. You can put the butcher's table in here as well. The butcher's table should be able to go. I think it should. I want it. it. Needs to be placed near the appropriate crafting station. That's right. So you need to have the cauldron. Cauldron can go right on the edge of your fire pit. And you can also build your your um, uh, little meat cooking station here. You can fit three of them in here. 
I mean, that's that, you know, I know that's not a lot. You're not going to get... You're not going to get a hearth, and you're not going to get the iron cooking station. Those are going to have to be outside. Okay, but you've got all this stuff in here, so let's get our baking table. That can go right here if you wish. Pots and pans. That's going to be a little trickier. Okay, so where do the pots and pans go? Well, I'll show you in a minute where we can put those. Um, but we can flop around inside, see if we can place them anywhere we can. Okay, so we've got one issue with that, which we will resolve. What about the tool shelf? The tool shelf can go up against one of these walls. But remember, you've also got your... shelving here. You don't want that to hit it. You've also got your forge tools. Those can go up here. And you've got your spice rack. Now the spice rack is a little tricky. So with the spice rack what we do is we have to add to our fire pit. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a pole right here. Then we're going to put a 45 degree beam, or actually, I'm going to put the 26 degree beam right over the pit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put our spice rack, if I can find it, right on that, because it has to hang on something. There you go. So it, it's fairly tight in here. I'm not. I don't want to um, give you the illusion that it's going to be a very spacious place, but you can fit quite a bit in here, and you still got some pretty open room. And I haven't put any containers in here yet. But what do we do with all the improvements? Well, now we go to the basement. Okay. So you're gonna have to take out a flooring piece or two, and boom, here we are. We're in the basement. Now there's that fire pit. Okay, we can um, work around that by whittling it down a little bit. That fire is to hopefully we do it. We got to be careful here, so we don't want that fire to go out. And normally, that fire should stay where it is, meaning you can bring this down quite a bit, and that fire will not drop down and it will not break. So now we've got this entire location under here to build some improvements. So, boom, there's our um, chopping block. Here is our tanning rack. Our Adzi, however you pronounce that. Our anvil. Our forge cooler is a little bit trickier. Okay, the forge cooler is a little bit harder because it it really does need a lot of room, but yeah, we managed it. So the forge cooler and the hardest one to place is your bellows. Now your bellows has to be within proximity of your forge. And it it really does need a deceptive amount of time, uh, a deceptive amount of space to um to be built so we need to get up right so what you would do normally is is you could take out this other piece of flooring here and what i do is is i build stairs Just like that. So when you're down here, you can jump right back up. Put our flooring back down. So it looks all copacetic. Again, it takes a little finesse, but you will get there and, you know, there you go. So you've got your level 5 workbench. You've got your level 4 forge. 
got your butcher's table, you got your fermenter, etc. Now the fermenter, I believe, we do have some improvements that we can build for that. So the crafting, we've got the spice rack we've done, we've got the butcher's table, pots and pans, that's one of the things that we needed to build. We've got the workbench, we've got the chopping block, we've got the tanning rack, we've got the adze, we've got the tool shelf, we do have a forge, we do not have a bellows, we've got anvils, we don't have a grinding wheel, Okay, that's something that's also for the forge. Now the grinding wheel um, probably can go. Yes, the grinding wheel can go down below. I just didn't put it there. I forgot. But you can build it in the basement. Okay. Um, we've got the anvil. We've got the forge cooler. We've got the tool rack. So really, the grinding wheel we should have put down there. So we would have every every improvement up until the plain stuff, basically, which is, you know, which are larger items like the, the blast furnace and the windmill and the spinning wheel. Everything up until the planes is in this little contained unit, um, except for pots and pans and the bellows. And now we're going to take care of that right now. So... Are we still at nighttime? Yes, we are. Okay, I'm gonna close that. What we wanna do is build just a little platform up here. Okay, so we're gonna build, take this, put it right here, okay? And we're going to, hopefully, got to be near it okay so you have to really know where your where it is it should be here it this is probably one of the hardest pieces to place in the game it, at least in my experience it really has to be extremely close um, and then it takes up a deceptive amount of space um, it's a real pain in the neck Hopefully this will do it. Huh, I'm not having any success at all here. I, I built this before. I don't know what the what I'm doing wrong. Okay. So it's one it's two pieces over. Let's let's work the problem. So it's definitely here. I wonder if it's, did they, ch maybe they changed something with Hearth and Home where it won't, um, go through this double wall. I mean, I, I built this a long time ago. Okay, there it is. See? So, you see how, now I got it close enough. Now, um, it's just a little platform. Move it in. Pop. There you go. So, there's your bellows, okay? Um, it doesn't look beautiful, but it is what it is. All right, and from here, we have one other thing that we need to do, and that's the pots and pans. And that, if I recall, it needs more space. I can't remember if I had to build a special wall unit for that as well, but we may have to. And I think what that entails is, is very simply, building another wall here, and then making sure that this has enough, no, not that, making sure that, that has enough space. How we're going to do that is still not enough. Needs to be placed near the appropriate crafting station. Okay. Again, it's proximity issue. So, where is the, where is it? Let's take a look. Tool shelf we did. Spice rack we did. Where the heck is it? <laughs> I'm going blind in my old age. There it is. 
pots and pans, cauldron improvements. So it has to be near the cauldron. I forgot about that. And that could be a problem for us, right? So what we need to do is, can we get this in here somehow? It needs more space. Where can we put the pots and pans? I may have found the weakness of this build. But I'm not giving up yet. Let's see if we get the more space to valid placement. Need to be near the appropriate crafting station. So this is an issue of proximity. Needs more space, needs more space. So, I suspect if I build a little wall here, will this be enough? Will a double wall be enough? And it is. So, in here, maybe you can put um, some a storage piece or what have you. Um, that in and of itself is our yurt defensive build. Okay? This should serve you well. You're going to have... You can fit almost everything in here. Again, we missed one one of the buildable improvements, which will go underneath. I'm just not going to do it now. It's the grinding wheel. That will fit in your basement. Okay. And again, let's just open up the basement so people know that it's there. They're coming in late to the video. Whatever. Remember, you did build stairs here. You're going to have to take out another piece to get down. Okay. You've lowered that so your fire still burns. And you, Well, let's put that in here while we're here sure that it, it, it works. Boom. And there's the grinding stone. Okay. So you've got multiple upgrades down here. Now you can also put storage down here as well. You can put chests if you want. Um, you can store stone. You can store wood. You can store coal. There's plenty of storage down here in your basement. Okay. So you've got all that. Now getting up sometimes can be a pain in the neck, but you build, build, you your, you build your stairs, your ladder, just got to finagle it a little bit, you're up, put, put back your flooring. Again, things are tight here, so you got to be, you know, mindful, but you can do it. You're a Valheim player. You can, you can survive. Oh, that piece was not built correctly. If you can survive Valheim, if you can, you can survive this build and just... Taking your time, getting your pieces to line up correctly, and boom. So I think that's it. There you have, this is an all-in-one location. You will not get smoked out because you have ventilation through the hole on the top. You have everything here to give you more comfort, um, except for some of the more advanced stuff that we just don't have the space for. We don't have space for the obliterator. We do not have space for some of the planes, larger pieces like the blast furnace, blast furnace, um, the windmill, um, you know, obviously the charcoal kiln and the smelter, those got to be outside. You're going to have to put a lot of those pieces outside. Um, and we don't have room for the hot tub in here, which is unfortunate. We do have a little space to play with. Okay, if you didn't, as an example, have this door here. You could fit a hot tub. Okay, so let me, re <laughs> let me uh, rephrase that. You can put a hot tub in here. The problem is, is that you've got a, well, you can fill it. So you can get a hot tub in here. I, um, I was wrong. So that's assuming, though, that you don't have a door here. If you do have a door here, you probably don't want a hot tub. And again, these shelves can be filled with whatever type of 
chests that you want, okay? Chests are fairly large. You gotta really, um, again, take your time with the placement. Um, I personally like these chests the best because they, you know, they fit well, they've got a lot of storage. And again, you're not gonna be having parties in here, okay? You're not gonna, there's hardly any room at all. Why won't this go? There we go. Okay, but you've got just about everything you need in here. And can you run around the room? Yeah, I mean, you're gonna have to run through your your hot tub, but there's enough space to at least get around. If your hot tub was not in here, you'd have ample room to run around. And I think that this, while compact, there's a lot here. This is a highly defensible position because you've got the five stones. It's highly defensible because we built a lot of the, um, we built the uh, starter fencing. I can't remember the name of it, so rather than stammer on, let's just go find it. We built the stake wall into the regular walls, which creates a very highly um, defensive structure. And the only thing we really have on the outside that looks kind of odd is the bellows, right? Which we could, you know, maybe put some stilts here. I don't know, maybe make this a little... Um, crafting area or storage I don't know um, imagine for a moment you've built walls all around here you've got area here maybe for a garden right here you've got over here maybe you put your charcoal kiln and your smelter um, maybe off the back here clear some of these trees put a little pig pen it's whatever you want but this is what I do this is one of the builds that I use when I first get going in Valheim when I want to get um, when I want to work through a world, this is my go-to build. Um, hopefully you enjoy this build. Hopefully you enjoy the fact that I took the time to go through each individual step. I showed you where you could put the stuff. I showed you how this can accommodate just about every improvement up into um, the plane. So I think this is a serviceable small little yurt that you can use all the way you could use it all the way to end game if you wanted to um, maybe build up this area a little bit more put some stone down here um, around the base make it look real good and then put some of your plain stuff uh, built in here I think it would work so anyways I really appreciate you taking the time to take a look at my first Valheim build video I know it's not pretty I know it wasn't glamorous I know it's not probably the type of build video that you're used to but it's my build video and this works for me and hopefully it works for you thanks so much for watching I appreciate it and we'll talk to you again soon